Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Read a story recently. It was one of those scenes that I was like fresh out of a movie. They were building a, a skyscraper and the crane operator was bringing a beam up to the 16th floor. That was where the worker was supposed to guide the beam into place. Well, the worker reached a little too far off and when he grabbed the beam, the beam pulled him off the ledge that he was on. Well, immediately he jumped onto the beam and grabbed it with both arms and, and, and hands and, and, and his legs as well. But then the beam began to tilt. Well, everyone knew that once the beam went vertical that the worker wasn't going to be able to hang on too much. Well, one of his friends, a co-worker, immediately jumped on the other end of the beam and the, the beam began to level out and the crane operator lowered the beam to ground and both men to the safety. Well, I guess the point of the story is it's good to have friends in high places. <laughs> well, that, that might be one point of it, but you know, a point like that I'm not sure that it that sticks with all of us because not too many of us are going to be tromping around on 16th floor of, of buildings. And not too many of us are in danger of grabbing the other end of a beam that pulls us off of a building. But I do think what we all long for is that kind of a friend. A friend who's, who's there with us all the way. A friend who doesn't hold back. A friend who does whatever it takes. A friend that we can trust. A friend that we can count on. And that's what a friend is. Someone you can trust. Someone you can count on. Seems like a strange th thing, but did you know God had th has three friends? God has three friends. The, the, the first friend of God that we read about in the Bible, it's Abraham. The Bible tells us that the word of God came to Abraham. Now, when it says the word of God, there wasn't any Bible, so it wasn't a written word. It was a spoken word. That Abraham heard the voice of God, and God said, go. And Abraham didn't argue. Abraham went. And it was in the journey, it was in the walking, it was in the time together that Abraham became a known as a friend of God, that Abraham trusted God over time, even when it, it, the future looked like what God said wouldn't come true, that Abraham leaned on God. And God said in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, Israel is my servant. God said, Abraham is my friend. A servant says, why? 
What are you doing? And the answer to a servant is, you do it because I said so. The answer to a friend is very different. A friend, a friend is, is someone that you expect to trust. And that expectation of trust goes both ways. That the expectation of a friend is to do the best for their friend. It doesn't have to be explicitly written out that there's a sense of expectation of trust in a friendship. Abraham was a friend of God. But that's not the only friend of God. The Bible tells us Moses was a friend of God. Moses was in the fields of Midian keeping sheep when he saw a bush that was burning but not consumed. And the Bible tells us that Moses said, I must turn aside. A time to pause, a time to wait, a time to look, and a time to listen. And it was in the turning aside that Moses heard the voice of God. God said, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Well, Moses trusted God and did what God told him to do. Well, it, it took some time, but as he trusted God, the more responsibility God gave him. And in Exodus 33, verse 11, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses face to face just as a man speaks to his friend. Then Moses was a friend of God. But I said God had three friends, or has three friends. Yes, Abraham, yes, Moses. But this is what Jesus says. It's the last night of his life on earth. He's telling his disciples that he'll die on a cross the next day and that he'll rise from the grave. Well, they can't see it. They don't know it. They're unsure about it. But this is what Jesus says in John 15, verse 9. I loved you as a father loved me. Now remain in my love. I have obeyed my Father's commands, and I remain in His love. In the same way, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. I have told you these things so that you can have the same joy I have, and so that your joy will be the fullest possible joy. This is my command, love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not what, know what his master is doing, but I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from the Father. No longer servants, but friends. No longer servants wondering what's going on. Do it because I said so. No, it's a, it's a friend. That you and I are the third friend of God that we lean on him, that we trust him, that we trust him to do what's best for us and we trust that he will do what's best for us and we do what's best for him. There's an expectation, a trust. And the first thing that Jesus tells us here is that a friend of God remains. Verse nine says, I loved you as the Father loved me, now remain in my love. That a, a friend of God remains he sticks with it. He hangs on. He does whatever it takes. Dennis and Barbara Rainey tell a story about two childhood friends named Johnny and Marty. Johnny and Marty were boyhood friends and they both palled around for a long time and they both loved baseball. As a matter of fact, they made a pact that they would play baseball together as friends as long as possible. Well, Johnny was the one who became the standout star. So much so that his high school coach told him that there were minor league tryouts coming and that he should go and, and try out to get a minor league contract. Well, Johnny said, that sounds great. Marty and I will go and try out. And that's when his coach told him. He said, no. Marty is an ugly duckling. He's too long, he's too lanky, and he doesn't hit well enough. But Johnny stuck with him. He said, no, Marty is determined. He can learn those things. 
that he's the most determined person I know. He's my friend. So both Johnny and Marty did go to the minor league tryouts. But it was Johnny that was offered a contract. But Johnny said he wouldn't take a contract with the minor league team unless Marty came with them. Well, Johnny's mother asked him, why would you go out on a limb like that? Why are you so determined to keep this pact? And Johnny said this, he said, belief is a kind of love and I believe in Marty. We're friends. Believing someone in someone is the best kind of love. Well, both Johnny and Marty did play in the minor leagues. But instead of Johnny being the one who began to grow and excel, it was Marty. And after three years in the minor leagues, it was, it was Johnny. It was Johnny who quit. It was Johnny who washed out. And it was Marty who got the major league contract. He was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals as a shortstop. Four times he was in the World Series. Seven times Marty was in the All-Star Games. And in 1944, Marty Marion became the most valuable player in the National League. And belief, belief is a kind of love. It's a, it's a kind of love that someone has in another. It's the best kind of love, the, the way one friend has a love for another. And Jesus is called you and me, his friend. And he said that he wouldn't leave us alone. And on the last night of his earthly life, he said he wouldn't leave us as orphans, that he would send his Holy Spirit, a helper, a comforter, one that would be with us for always. That Jesus calls you and me friend, not servant. Now, friendship of a, a, a servant, that, that love is one way. You do what I told, you do what I said because I told you. But it's a friend. It's a friend that there's an expectation that friends will do the best for each other. That friends trust each other. That Christ trusts you. That Jesus Christ believes in you in the way one friend believes in another that he sticks with us, that he hangs on, that he remains. And he rose from the grave to give you and me power that we might stick with him, that we might hang on, that we might remain, that our identity in Christ is, is that we're never alone, that you and I have been called as friends. And a friend of God, well, a friend of God remains. They stick with it. They hang on because he gave us that power. But not only that, verse 11, Jesus says, a friend of God is a, has joy. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that you can have the same joy I have and that your joy will be the fullest possible joy. Not a little bit of joy or a sprinkle of joy or a dollop of joy. The fullest possible joy. When Moses went to Pharaoh, and said, God said, let my people go. Sometimes we, we leave out the second part. God told Pharaoh, let my people go that they may celebrate me in the wilderness. That it was for joy. It was for celebration. But he said that they may celebrate me in the wilderness. Well, the wilderness is not the kind of circumstance, not the kind of place that you would ever think anybody would ever celebrate. That a wilderness is, is, is equated with hardship and difficulty. But it's in the hardship. It's in the difficulty. It's in the journey that we find our joy in our friend Jesus. I read a story about a woman who had long had a dream to travel the English countryside by train. She saved up enough money and she traveled from plane to, from the U.S. to, to London 
there. She spent the night in a hotel and she boarded a train the next day. As soon as she began to travel by train on the countryside, she began to fret. She began to fret that the, the windows were, were often foggy and she couldn't see well. She began to fret that the temperature wasn't just right on the train. She began to fret that in her seat assignment. And then it wasn't long after that that she arrived at her destination. And that's when she said, if I'd known I was going to arrive so soon, I wouldn't have wasted my time fretting so much. Well, that's a parable for for life. If we'd known we'd arrived so soon, we wouldn't have spent so much time fretting. We've gotten good at fretting. We've gotten good at, at, at stating that everything isn't suited to, to serve us. But you and I were made for joy, not for fretting. Jesus rose from the grave to give us his fullest possible joy that he sticks with us as a friend, one that we can trust, one that will remain, that won't leave us alone. And when he rose from the grave, he gave us those eyes to see his blessing, to hear his voice, to recognize his hand in the world around us, and to trust, and to trust. A friend of God has joy, yes, Abraham knew that joy. Yes, Moses knew that joy, even in the wilderness. And, and you and I can know that joy as well. Not one day, but this day. The last thing that I want to talk about this morning is that a friend of God obeys. Verse 14, this is what Jesus says. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you servants. A servant might ask why, and the answer comes back, because I said so. A friend, a friend is someone that you expect to do the best for you, and you do the best for the friend. There's an expectation in a friendship that you can trust that friend, and that friend trusts you. Jesus put it really succinctly here. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. It's so succinct, we'd, I think we'd like a little more wiggle room. That you know, <clears throat> We kind of like that, that form of Christianity that's all about a feeling in the heart, as long as we love, and that love is a feeling. But Jesus is telling us here that it's an action as well. That it's an action as well. When I was growing up, my grandmother lived with us for a while. And um, my grandmother was very, very Baptist. <laughs> that when I was younger, we would go visit my grandmother. Often we'd stay for a couple of weeks in small middle Georgia town during the summers. And they, it was a lot like walking on the face of the sun, spending, <laughs> spending the summers in middle Georgia. But whenever I would meet someone, well, both in that town and in any time I ever met someone who was from that town, I would ask them if they knew my grandmother because that was my only point of contact to that town. She raised her family in that town. And my grandmother had an unusual name. Her name was Jack Cooper. Well, not many women in this middle Georgia town named Jack Cooper. And every time the comment would come back, yes, I think I do. She's a member of the Baptist church, isn't she? <laughs> That's how Baptist she was. Well, my grandmother tells a story about a when she was baptized, that she was very afraid of the water and she kept telling the preacher how afraid she was of the water and so please be careful and you know, that she was, well, the, the preacher was sympathetic with her fear and so when he baptized her, he didn't take her all the way down into the water. As a matter of fact, he left a little of her, her face out of the water. He left her, 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 her nose out of the water. So later in life, she used to joke that, well, she was about 99% Christian. She wasn't really sure about her nose. <laughs> well, I, it was a funny story to tell, but I think that all of us want to hold a little something back from being completely Christian. I mean, God doesn't really expect us to be completely Christian at school, does he? We ought to be able to hold at least a little something back because, you know, Sometimes in school, to be completely Christian means that 
we might not be accepted. Or, or maybe at work. I mean, can you do your job and be 100% Christian? Or do we want to hold a little something back? Or maybe it's at home. We say, well, you know, my family, they know how I really am and, 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 and that's okay. And that we don't have to change. We can hold something back. Or maybe it's not a place. It's not school, it's not work, it's not home. Maybe it's a person. It's a person that hurt you and hurt you deeply. And you don't have to be 100% Christian to them because they hurt you. And you can rewrite the rules for them because they aren't 100% Christian, that you don't have to be, that they hurt you. And you can hold something back. And you know your weakness and you know it well. Jesus knows that you and I, that we can't be 100% Christian on our own. That's why he gave his life on the cross, to take away the power of all those things that would hold us back, all those things that would call us to, cause us to stumble, all those things that would defeat us, He defeated them on the cross. And when he rose from the grave, he gave us power in our weakness, power in all those places that we don't have strength. Romans chapter eight, verse 26 says, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. It's okay to have weakness. That's where we call on Jesus Christ, our friend, to be strong. This morning, it may be, that you know that place of your weakness, that you know it better than than anything. And this morning you wanna call on Jesus that you might be made strong, strong. It might be a place or it might be a person that you're having a hard time loving. I wanna pray with you and pray with you now. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, we always need your strength. And sometimes that, it's a place that we're weak. A place that, that we know we're vulnerable, we're exposed. Or a place that we don't wanna change, that we, we can be a little bit Christian and not all the way. Well, when you called us friend, you didn't call us to, some, to be sometimes a friend. You called us to obey you. Not sometimes, but always. And that we trust you today. That we obey you today. Or it may be that what we do best is we fret. We worry. That fear Fear keeps us occupied on ourselves and our wants and not on you, Jesus. For your joy to be made full, Jesus, this day, helps to turn our eyes on you, to know your strength, to hear your voice, and to celebrate in your joy. Jesus, we also know that This day, it may be that we haven't stuck by you. You've stuck by us, but we haven't stuck by you. We haven't remained. Give us that strength we don't have. The power of your Holy Spirit to know we're not alone and that you give strength to hang on, especially when we don't have that strength. That we might, well, we might know that we're Friend, friend, what a powerful word. It's what you call us, friend of God. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you wanna see the live services, 
9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 11.15 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.